Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 27th, 2023. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I hope Santa Claus was very, very good to you. And um, as you probably have seen in the national news, we got hammered here by a, uh, by a storm, a blizzard. Um, so our Christmas was a lot different than expected, but it was also it was also a very, very good one, even though it turned out to be a very quiet one. Let's take a look at what happened here overnight. First off, we had um, European mark, excuse me, Asian markets um, up across the board uh, doing pretty good, probably a response to that big move that we had yesterday in the market on very low volume. We'll look at that in just a second. Uh, European markets are also bullish across the board this morning trying to push up. They're doing a little catch up from yesterday's move and um, they're up there trying to attempt um, all time highs here in the market. And here in the US, we've got just a little bit of uncertainty, maybe um, flat open. Um, we'll see how that plays out here as we go through the day. Now, I'm going to make this video just a little bit different here this morning because a little bit more of um, an education session. I want to point a couple things out and um, hopefully you guys will find this useful. First off, let's take a look at these charts. If we take a look at the diamonds charts, one of the things that's a true fact in the market is the trend is the trend until the trend breaks and when will we know that the trend is going to break one of the things that we have gotten ourselves involved in in this world and in our news and everything we are so hyped up on prediction in this market that we lose out on some very simple facts first off the trend is up Diamonds is in a bullish trend. It's at an all-time high, um, and we have broken out, and we continue to see those bulls drive in. Now, we are seeing, if I were to um, draw this up, you can see we've been moving up the last uh, three or four days, and our volume has been declining the last three or four days. Now, you might want to look at this at the moment with that volume in decline in this stretch that we're kind of being led down a primrose path. When, when volume is declining this sharply and we're moving up strongly, there's a problem here and something that we need to be paying attention to. Now, does that mean we fall? No, it means the trend is the trend until the trend breaks, but it also gives us a warning it gives us a warning to be cautious, to be careful, to not overtrade, to not chase blindly into the market. This could be setting up a great big bull trap, meaning that we have that race, that, that anticipation, oh my gosh, I'm missing out, I've got to hurry up. And remember, it's the last folks in the door that get hurt the most in the market. And if I run through the other indexes, if we take a look at our SPY, SPY is also in an upside trend. That is, you can't, um, you can't look at this chart and see it any other way. We are in an upside trend. How long will that last? I can't tell you. But the trend is the trend until the trend breaks. Now, if we take a look here, one of the reasons I think we're continuing to show this big divergence in price and volume is just simply because the institutional drive here in the market, they are doing everything possible to take the only index that hasn't made an all-time high breakout and push it for, um, for that headline. They want the headline. All markets pushing through all-time highs. The S&P 500 is the only one lagging behind that possibility to break out. Now, does that mean if we break out, we just zoom and continue to run to the upside? Or do you think that after a historic race back up, there's going to be some kind of rest or pullback in the market? 
common sense would say eventually we're going to see and when that's going to occur i'm not going to predict it i'm just going to tell you that yes there'll be some kind of rest or pullback in the market that's the way the market works so watch that carefully and then when we take a look at the qqq same thing is true here all-time high breakouts very very bullish continuing to run up while the volume is declining sharply that could be a hint bulls are definitely in control the trend is up the trend stays the trend until the trend breaks but you don't want to be the last one putting on blinders saying never a chance that we're going to move back down those are the folks that are going to get hurt the worst so remember be really careful in this period of time when volumes are really light and um, we're likely trading with computers more than anything else to be chasing a bunch of long already very stretched out stocks to the upside and then if we take a look at our IWM the Russell also moved up yesterday and the Russell is a long ways from being a breakout here and I don't think we're gonna make it by the end of the year in the Russell the Russell is giving us that clue and remember the Russell has for years and years and years been that clue for the market of market direction it's showing that we still have some issues and problems here in the market we do want to remember that this is the largest index in the market and it is lagging behind but but the trend is the trend until the trend breaks now one thing i'll say about this trend that i do think is important is that this trend is parabolic very parabolic right now trying to do some catch up here in the market now it doesn't mean that we can't continue to stretch to the upside trend is the trend until the trend breaks but we want to be watching this closely how hard how fast we're stretching here to the upside while at the same time our volume is declining so sharply so that's something to be paying attention to here in the market but just keep in mind that we have overhead resistance here substantial overhead resistance here in the russell okay now let me share a couple other things with you there was a article in cnbc yesterday and it was asking the question and it was asking the ex the so-called talking head experts you know in the market will there be a recession in 2024 well let me resolve that for you i have no idea when it's going to happen and here's the other thing they don't either they have no idea they're trying to look into the future and tell us what's coming and so far no one has been able to do that and and <laughs> we cannot predict the future what we can do is we can look at the past and we can look at our history and we can get a lot of information from that remember even though we can take a really long look at history we also cannot use that as an absolute remember history sometimes changes but here's a fact a fact that you can go check out yourself when we have bond inversions that are where, where our short-term bonds are more expensive than our long-term bonds if you go to the federal reserve database site you will never ever find a time in recorded history that we didn't go into recession not once that we go into recession now it doesn't say it's going to be a long one and it doesn't say it's going to be a hard one we don't know that federal reserve doesn't even know that but it says historically never been a time that we didn't have a recession so if we can get off of this idea that we can predict the exact time just know that there's likely a recession coming when that happens i don't know but what we can start to do is we can start paying attention to the market trend the trend is the trend until the trend breaks pretty simple stuff we can get past all of this prediction and and know that the likelihood is there now where will it start and how will it start well historically how it starts 
And if you look historically, the real big problem in the market usually comes when the mark when the FOMC not just starts cutting rates, but starts cutting rates in panic. Remember, when the market, when the Federal Reserve starts cutting rates in that panic move because things are starting to come unraveled, that's when the market really sells off. Historically, that's always been true. When the, the FOMC feels a need to cut and start supporting the market, it's when the market starts moving down because there's a problem out there. And where does that usually start? It usually starts in our banking institutions or in a liquidity crisis, which again is kind of in the banking institutions. Remember, we make money by creating debt. The Fed has been doing everything in its power to restrict capital and stop the creation of money to reduce inflation. So is there a possibility in the, in the future and will it be near future or down the road? I have no idea when that's going to happen, but yes, there's probably going to be some kind of a banking problem. There's probably going to be some kind of a liquidity crisis that slows the economy, the purpose of raising rates. Okay, so something to keep in mind, and, and that is normal. Stop trying to predict when it's going to occur and just pay attention to the charts. The Next thing that I want to point out that I know some folks are not going to like seeing this, and that is some um, some very simple facts here, um, is that our P.E. ratios are extremely extended. You can see here that our P.E. ratios, current P.E. ratio is 30.9, and that is 52.9% above the historical average of the market of 20.2. That puts us 1.3 standard deviations above the historical average. Now, does that mean we necessarily have to fall? No, it does not. It means the trend is the trend until the trend breaks, but it's telling us that we may be reaching a situation where if it does start to fall, it could fall pretty hard or we could consolidate for a long period of time to absorb this kind of big move. Remember, we have been up here before, okay, where we were up over two standard deviations above before we fell before. And you can see back over here, 2008, excuse me, that's not 2008, that's 2000, when we were um, extremely overbought in the market. We were well above two standard deviations and then the market reversed and came back down. So I don't know when this will occur, but we will want to recognize the fact that our PE ratios are very high and the possibility of a pullback if it begins, if the trend breaks, that we could see some pain from the market because we are overvalued. And there's another way of uh, looking at this, and this is a, um, a method that Warren Buffett uses. Warren Buffett um, method is, they call it the Buffett indicator. He uses um, a ratio here of the US stock market value uh, divided by the gross domestic product. And that is right now at 175%. Um, or um, and what that means is is that we are overvalued. And if you take a look, the historical average in here, um, this is actually 44.14% or 1.4 standard deviations above the historical average. So our PE ratios are getting pretty frothy. And what that does tell us is that if the market, if the trend does break, if at some point we see that pullback in the market, stop predicting it, if we see that break in the market, then there could be some additional pain coming because we have to absorb these high prices. Remember, the market is nothing more than an auction, an auction where buyers and sellers are trying to determine what the current or the correct price of a stock will be. 
we have since the beginning of the market been a very emotional market as well and what that means is we have boom and bust cycles in the market where we get overly excited we get overly um, stimulated on the bullish side and we extend and we extend and we extend until the trend breaks and then we start to move back and we start realizing hey we probably went a little bit too far how harsh that becomes truly up to the market itself will the will the evidence of the market support these current prices well we're going to find that out once we start going through the next couple of quarters of earnings can these prices be supported by earnings will there be enough in the earnings to support that and if that's the case we could continue to extend and remember very simple thing to remember the trend is the trend until the trend breaks so I hope you guys find that to be useful or helpful but you also don't want to be putting your head in the sand assuming that the market's never ever going to sell again okay remember when the Fed cuts that usually means there's a problem there's a problem the market's slowing too much there's a problem and we have to cut rates so just keep that in mind let's take a look um, at um, a few uh, things here in the market that we'll want to be paying attention to first off our economic calendar for today boy there isn't much uh, for us to um, be worried about here on our on our economic calendar we've got a richmond fed manufacturing uh, number they are expecting that to continue to come in at a negative we'll see we one of the things that we have done our manufacturing sector has been pretty horrific uh, for the entire year but we don't care and so um, i don't think that's going to have any impact on the market survey of business uncertainty um, unlikely to have any impact on the market and then we've got a couple of bond auctions in here to um, be paying attention to then if we take a look um, into Thursday, Thursday is our biggest day, international trading goods. We've got jobless claims. We've got um, retail inventories, wholesale inventories. Um, we've got pending home sales, natural gas, and um, petroleum status um, will be on uh, Thursday. And then just keep in mind that on Friday, um, we're heading into a holiday again. We've got a Chicago PMI number. We're gonna have an early close um, here in the market. Um, so just kind of um, know that as we move closer and closer to that holiday volumes are likely to become lighter and lighter and lighter um, as we move into that holiday let's take a look here and by the way right way options will be closed on Friday there will be morning no morning market prep video on Friday let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar and our earnings calendar well there are there's nothing there's no confirmed earnings report here for today so we have a very light economic calendar we have a very light earnings calendar not much inspiration here um, in the market to move us a bunch except for that institutional desire to maybe push us to record highs in the spy so we do have to remember trend is a trend until the trend breaks there's no reason to believe that we can't continue to move up but just be careful being that person chasing this move to the upside as volume, if volume continues to decline in the market. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Um, other evidence that we have that there, we may be a little bit stretched out here are T2122 continues to be very, very extended here in the market. We finished the day yesterday at 98.15, very stretched up here. Our T2122 uh, 108 percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average is pushing up here toward 80 percent 
Um, well, you can see what typically happens when we stretch up here. I'm not saying that we always do this, but typically when we get this um, overly bullish and overly rambunctious in the market, there is some kind of a reaction to the downside that can be a little bit painful for those that push in at the last minute. And then our uh, T2107, same thing, very, very frothy here, very extended. Um, this is a percentage of stocks above the 200 day. We have pushed everything to near perfection as we head into the first quarter earnings report. So remember, it's gonna be two weeks or so before we start hitting those first quarter earnings reports. So, um, you know, just kind of figure there's going to be a little bit of, after we get past this hype and maybe take out the highs on the S&P 500, that we could see a kind of choppy consolidating period in the market as we wait for evidence from the earnings that we can support these current prices. Question is, can we and um, will we? I don't know that, don't want to predict that. I just want to watch the price action in the charts. Let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be setting up, but before we do that, guys, remember this is um, this is really a bad time um, in the market to be thinking about um, rushing into charts. I've given you all the evidence of overextension, um, um, all of those things that volume is declining and we're likely to see that volume stay weak in decline um, you know as we finish up this year that doesn't mean that we don't see prices go higher but be really really careful because we saw that one day move how quickly the market can reverse and how big those moves can be. We have extended so much, we're so parabolic in these moves, we have to expect that we could get another warning. This looks like a warning to me. It's like, um, you know, they they shot a warning shot over the bow of the, of the ship saying, um, danger, we're ignoring it. Um, <laughs> We'll just have to wait and see if we get another warning shot um, or if um, we get that nasty reversal that hurts people in the market. So just watch carefully here. I'm, I'm not expecting any kind of, again, trend is a trend until the trend breaks, but we are in a little bit of a danger zone and being led maybe just a little bit down that primrose path um, thinking that the market's never going to pull back again. We're hopped up on this idea that the Fed's going to cut rates. And that's awesome. Um, if they can truly engineer a soft landing, first time in history, I'd love to see it. But so far, that's not been the case in history in the market. So just be careful there. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks. And um, remember, this is not um, any kind of recommendation um, that you should be buying or selling of stocks. Remember, never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Do your own evaluation. Make sure you're paying very, very close attention to the market conditions, the condition of the stock that you're in, following your rules, your guidance, your um, a risk tolerance in the market. First off, I was looking um, over here yesterday at Tesla. Tesla is in a nice bullish upside trend. This is one of the things I always look for in the market is when downtrends break and we hold higher lows. So keep an eye um, here on Tesla. Every reason to believe Tesla can continue to push to the upside. Honeywell was another one of those examples where we've been running in a very parabolic move to the upside, but there's that pattern. We're holding those higher lows. There was the price alert continuing to extend on higher, looking for resistance to occur here in Honeywell um, up at that level. Watch that close. American Tower, very same pattern here where we've been running up strongly. We've got a resistance above in the chart 
and every reason to believe at this moment that we could continue to push through to the upside. So keep an eye on American Tower. Um, saw 3M making a really good move here the last three trading days. And you'll want to notice that this is a huge downtrend break here in 3M and a breakthrough, some substantial resistance. We held it as support pushing back up. Now, I don't think I'd want to chase it already three days up. But any rest consolidation or pullback might be an opportunity to pick up some 3M. So keep a close eye on that. Um, I saw Coke making a move yesterday, um, trying to push on up. We have this little tiny downtrend here, right here was our lower high where we failed some support in the chart. So that creates the downtrend. And now we're trying to break back through and recover. So if we can break back through and hold that higher low in there, look for a coca-cola for that upside move if we happen to get a failure here would anybody be surprised though if that fails that is a lower high at price resistance in the chart and that's why you don't want to chase a move like this right in the price resistance one of the one of the things that i struggled with for a long long time everyone again sticking with the kind of the education part of the video today is um not recognizing price resistance and trends and I would buy right here and then I would I would get punished over and over and over and I was thinking now wait a minute something's not not right here and the problem was me I was continuing to buy directly at price resistance in the chart getting caught up in the emotion of the move um, and not buying stocks at price support, not at price resistance. So that's why I mention this all the time. Break the downtrend, put in a higher low, and that establishes an upside trend. And if you can make that one shift, one shift in your trading, your win-loss ratio will improve and start making more money in the market. So kind of keep that in mind. Are we in technically correct patterns in here in this chart? And the answer right now is no. We've got to wait here for just a bit in that chart. Um, other places to definitely look, uh, big tech. Big tech is, um, er, you know, if it, they can talk about AI, they're zooming to the upside. I'm highly emotional on this. Yes, we still don't even really know whether AI is going to be a good thing or a bad thing for us and how we're actually going to be utilizing it um, in the world. Um, and watching that closely, we're still racing to the upside here. And once again, there's that higher low in here. So we're going even more parabolic here in AMD. Um, no reason to believe it can't go higher, but watch that carefully. Um, trend is a trend until the trend breaks. Um, other places that you might look, I saw PayPal, nice little bullish pattern in here, pushing up into this downtrend. Um, I think there's every reason to believe PayPal could hold this trend and push on up. The question is, will it be able to break through that resistance right now? Watch that carefully if it can. If it can push on up and through and hold, then I'm really going to be interested in PayPal breaking through that big downtrend to the upside. So watch that one. And Chewy made a big move. Now here's one of those things that happened in the market where I'm looking for an entry, it fails. Uh, now here's, here's a, the second thing that was probably the biggest problem for me um, in trading and that was anticipating the entry, trying to predict. And it's what I've spent a whole lot of time talking about here in the market. Stop predicting that the trend is the trend until the trend breaks. Well, obviously we were moving up in this chart. The trend broke and we broke down. So where do we get bullish in here? We get bullish once we make a first higher low. What we've done in here is we zoomed up. So we zoomed to the upside because of all of the emotion in the market pushing this up look for this rest or pullback that may hold a support level here in the chart i don't know if it'll pull back that far i'm just making that as a, a note it could it could rest right in here find that trend right up in here okay so watch for that next opportunity in um, chewy to follow the trend we want to buy stocks at or near price support we don't want to buy them at or near price resistance so keep an eye on chewy so with that, everyone, I hope this was a helpful video. I know it's a little bit longer. I know it's a little bit different um, here in the market. Trends are bullish. 
remain bullish in the market, but be very, very careful about chasing um, very extended stocks in um, low volume environments because we are in that potential where we could get that one thing that reverses us really quickly here. Um, certainly, um, S&P 500, they're going to work really, really hard institutionally to try and get this headline. If they can get the Diamond Spy and QQQ breaking um, all-time highs, everyone's going to be happy. We're going to continue to be happy to ignore the Russell that is a long ways away from breaking to those new highs. So just kind of keep those things in mind. I want to wish you all a... Uh, a great day and, and by the way guys uh, do me a favor in the comments today let me know if this kind of video was if you um, like this kind of video where um, you look at some of the actual details and get past this hype and prediction um, if you do let me know because uh, maybe I can start producing a little bit more content along those lines um, wish you all a very successful day in trading be very very careful um, have a great Great one, and I'll see you right back here, right and early Thursday morning. I wish you all the very, very best.